Greetings, ladies and gentlefish, and welcome back to some more Dinky Donks, I suppose. Um, this is going to be the week of Pansy, as I kind of alluded to last week. And just before we get onto the game, I would like to have a shout out for Pansy, actually. Those of you who play on the EU servers, especially if you frequent the EU forum, uh, you may be aware that uh, Pansy has been doing. Ooh, someone's got three. Uh, marks on their gun barrel for the T-52. Anyway, you might be aware that Pansy has once again been doing his uh, kind of Christmassy skins for people. Um, and that means, from my perspective, that once again I get a working golden CGC skin. The beautiful metallic turd will ride again. Um, anyway, on to the actual game in question. I've got two games for you in this particular video, and... This first game is a little bit of a treat because not only do we have Pansy, who is platooned up with Chaos Raven, he is also platooned up with Baldrix. This is a bit of a double whammy. We're going to see this game from Pansy's perspective. Um, this is a tier 7 maximum match. There are tier 7s and tier 6s in this game. Pansy is in the AMX 13, 50 saw, 50 saw, 57, sorry, the mighty buzzsaw. Um, uh, Baldrix in his P43, ter. Chaos Ravens in an SU-100M1, and they are here on, what the name is, there we go, Fisherman's Bay. Couldn't remember the name of the map for a moment. And we're going to see what they can do. Now, it's worth pointing out, of course, that they are top tier. Ooh. And the AMX 1357, for anyone who isn't aware, can be a little bit uh, fun. I don't know, It's a. it doesn't sound it when you describe it on paper. It's a French light tank, the AMX 13 ton French light tank, with a 57 meter, millimeter autoloader, which is quite a small gun, but that autoloader, oh, it unloads quickly, oh, those shots, mm. it's quite, I, I, quite satisfying to use, put it that way. And uh, as you can see, Pansy just came around and, um, well, that flat Panzer got executed. Ooh, careful T-52. Um, so Pansy's got three rounds left that he can try and plonk into someone, and oh, there's the edge of the map. That's a Type 64. Just seems that he's looking who he might be able to dump these shots into, or should he go for a reload? And uh, this T-52 is uh, what is he doing? That's not the one with three marks of excellence on his gun barrel, just for the record. This T-52 is a little bit of a donkey. Anyway. Never mind. I must admit, I think in this situation I probably would have gone for the reload because the mag reload on the... Oh dear, wedged on a rock. The mag reload on the AMX 1357 isn't particularly long. Um, but Pansy's still got some shells and... Ah, in case you hadn't noticed um, or hadn't worked it out, Pansy, I believe, is having some connection problems at this point in time. So... Yeah. In fact, I say Pansy. Is everyone having connection problems? Yeah. So you know you get people go on about wargaming servers. <laughs> no, that's an actual situation where wargaming servers have derped up. And so finally, Pansy's able to put three shots there into the Type 64. I was a bit confused. It's not very much like Pansy to kind of feck about and generally waste time, but that makes a lot more sense. Well, and, and that guy driving around in the circle in his D-52. So my apologies to... Where is he? Jury. Sorry about that, mate. I was a bit harsh to you, whereas actually it was Wargaming servers being a little on the special side. Um, or maybe, to be fair, it wasn't their servers. Maybe it was just a connection terminal somewhere that everyone was going through. I don't know exactly, but point is, it wasn't Pansy's internet connection per se. It affected a whole bunch of people. So... When people start going, Emma Ged, Wargaming Servers, that's what it looks like when Wargaming Servers or something other than just your own internet connection has a little bit of a hissy fit. Um, anyway, while I've been rabbiting on, uh, Pansy has been using the buzzsaw to great effect. And you might be able to see why I call this thing the buzzsaw. It's just like pew, 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 pew. It's relentless and uh, can be a lot of fun. Um, I have actually seen people suggest this is one of those tanks where it might be worth having a commander with Deadeye. Is it Deadeye? 
the gunner skill that increases your chance of critical hits because when you're pumping out that many shots that quickly, oh, that could get a little bit dirty. Anyway, you're up to 1,555 damage, 218 assistance damage, scoreline is 6-3, and Pansy's running out of armor-piercing ammo already. The ammo capacity on this tank is not fantastic. I mean, he's got a respectable stock of APCR to back that up, but, uh, yeah, starting to drain through some of his ammo reserves, and that's a rather unfortunate T-3485, hasn't even shot Pansy yet. Oh, poor baby, and, uh, well, yeah, that was a thing that happened, and this is, this is what happens when, you know, you might be looking at this going, oh my god, that's, that's overpowered, well, this is kind of what happens when you take an autoloader, top tier, in the hands of a player who knows what he's doing, like, you just, oof, oof. Oh, that could have ended very poorly. KV2 shot there almost takes Pansy out, but doesn't quite do it. But the end result, experienced player with an autoloader, top tier. The end result can be, oh, makes you need to take a shower afterwards. Anyway, scoreline is 8-4. Pansy's now actually only down to 16 rounds of APCR plus one round of armor piercing. And he's used auto-aim an awful lot here because this gun just unloads so quickly. Unfortunately, one of the flaws of that is that one doesn't always lead and aim one's shots optimally. And so it takes three shots against the enemy uh, light tank there instead of one. And then he doesn't finish off the um, 45 TP. But frankly, it doesn't really matter. It's just pumping shot after shot after shot into the bad guys, and suddenly Pansy's got three rounds of ammunition left. So you have to be a little careful with your ammo in this tank, because uh, otherwise things go wrong. And to be fair, right at the end there, like I can totally understand why Pansy was far more interested in just trying to pump out the shots and get as much damage as he could, because frankly the game was over. So there we go, a nice little quick one to kick things off with. Let's have a look at the post-game stats. Look, I'm not about to try and claim that that game was big or clever or anything like that, but it was funny. I mean, one end of the spectrum top-tier autoloader murderating things, and at the other end of the spectrum, everyone having all, the, all of the latency, you know. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, that game was enough for for Pansy, Ace Tanker, <laughs> Bruiser, Duelist, Fighter, Fire for Effect. No big shiny medals, but a whole host of nice little ribbons. 3,899 damage done, 5 kills, 1,509 base experience, and Baldrick came second on his team, which is always nice to see. The enemy team, well... There wasn't that much separating the enemy team from the friendly team. The friendly team overall did just a little bit better, but the real difference was the friendly team had Pansy, who pumped out 4,000 damage. I mean, go figure. 54 shots fired. You don't say that very often. 48 hits, 45 pens for that damage count. 5 hits received. You don't say that very often in a light tank either. 4 penetrated and... Zero non-pens, which makes me think, oh yes, there was one splash damage there as well. Four enemy vehicles spotted, ten damaged, five destroyed, 586 assistance, 3.73 kilometers travelled, and even though Pansy burned through pretty much all of his ammo, and so all of his APCR by extension, and so that could make it quite an expensive round, he still made a 45,000 credit profit with a premium account. With a standard account, that would have been a teeny weeny incy bincy loss in credits. So, yeah, that was a bit of a rip-roaring game. Uh, why don't we have a look at another one that's maybe a little more sensible. Second match then, and this time we join Pansy driving the GSOR. This is the Tier 9 British light tank. Um, as far as I can work out, generally considered to be a pretty underwhelming machine. Pansy is platooned up with a couple of guys. Uh, we've got a Dinger and we've got a guy from Floof, which just for the record is an awesome name for a clan. And they are in a Centurion 7-1 and a Leopard prototype. And we're here on Kharkov 
which is not a map that typically comes to mind for good light tank games. Now, interestingly, Pansy's set up here. I, I would be curious um, if he gets around to watching this. If you see this, Pansy, what is your or was your rationale? Woo, there's a bit of a boop behind this equipment setup. So this game would be before equipment 2.0 came up. 2.0, 2.0. But you can see Pansy's using binos and a camo net, which is unusual. Um, we don't know what the third equipment slot is, of course. Uh, now, the British light tanks are generally considered to be quite painful to play. Um, but they are quite sneaky. And, well, we're just going to see how this pans out. But straight out, Pansy has managed to get himself into a position where he is spotterating all of the things. This is a tier 10 match for the record. Pansy's in a tier 9, so middle of the road matchmaking. I mentioned it was Kharkov. And I also mentioned that, I think I mentioned, this is not the sort of map you typically expect light tanks to do well on. Because of that dirty great big city. Having said that, I mean, light tanks can do well on it. It's just not... Um, well, it's not a map I personally feel massively comfortable on in any machine, if I'm being honest. Nonetheless, scoreline is 1-1, one, one, and we're going to see how this pans out. Now, my supposition, just quickly going back to the equipment point, I would suppose... One of the big things about the British light tanks is they don't carry much ammunition. You can see here, Pansy has 25 rounds. And this is a 90mm gun with 240 average damage. Now... It doesn't take too much maths for you to work out that the maximum amount of damage this tank can do is actually quite uninspiring. And it has high explosive here, and actually, wow, no, the high explosive sucks. So I was thinking, oh, 90mm HE. Brits tend to have quite good HE rounds. Maybe it's a bit like the German light tanks, and they've got decent HE. No, 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 none of that. Anyway, what I was going to say, I'm wondering if the logic is that, generally speaking... You can't rely on being able to shoot all the things in your British light tanks, partly because your ammunition is just so pitiful in supply. So I'm wondering if Pansy's got binos and a camo net to try and double down on just getting spotting, essentially. And you can see, to be fair to him, he's up to, what, 2.2k assistance already? And uh, we're about three minutes into this match. And, actually, his platoon mate there... Um, Dominicus 799LT in the Centurion has managed to pick up a kill for himself. So, this is actually not a bad start for Pansy here. But he does have to be a little bit careful. So, the British tanks, in addition to having terrible ammunition, uh, stockpiles, reserves, supplies, whatever, they're also, I mean, it's a light tank, but they are not very well armoured. But they're quite small, and they're quite sneaky, and... Um, so I will say, I haven't played them, but despite people's initial reaction of, oh my god, these things are terrible, and I'm not convinced that they're not terrible, but it is actually quite interesting to look at the um, sort of how these tanks are performing. And actually, compared to other light tanks of the same tier, they don't appear to be doing too badly. Um, so, I don't know, maybe they're not as terrible as people think. Then again, maybe they are. I don't know. I really don't know. It can be quite judge, uh, quite judge, quite difficult to judge, sort of tank performance from the statistics available to the player base. Anyway, scoreline is 2-5. So the friendly team got off to a good start, but things are going a little bit ploin shaped, and Panties has pushed up here. And of course, the friendly team are devolving into throwing criticisms at each other because what else are you going to do? And Panties going to finally use this 90 mil gun. So, and he rolls low with his first damaging shot, of course. So, 240 Alpha with this gun and 232 penetration, which for a tier 9 light tank is actually quite good. APCR pushes that penetration up to 254. 230 odd pen. I mean, there are tier 10 light tanks. I'm thinking the T100 LT that sort of pack that amount of penetration. So, the fact that this one is doing it at tier 9, I mean, that's nice. But the reload on the gun is not particularly inspiring. The alpha damage is nothing special. The ammunition supply is woeful. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Anyway, Skoda T50 down here while the friendly base is being capped. And look at this reload. It's possible that given Pansy's using binos and um, 
a camo net, it's entirely possible he's not using a gun rammer um, here. Uh, but uh, even so, the reload seems to be maybe the best part of 10 seconds on a 90mm gun at tier 9. Anyway, scoreline is 6-5, but the bad guys are in the base eating the friendly cookies. Scoreline is 6-6, bad guys are still in the base eating the friendly cookies. And unfortunately, that was Domini, who has just fallen one of Pansy's platoon mates, who seemed to be doing alright in his centurion. But Pansy pushes forward here. Now, the, the, the friendly team need to get a base reset, essentially and they've got about half a minute in which to do it. Now that doesn't mean that they're out of time, they can definitely um, get a base reset. Oh, that very nearly went very badly wrong. Um, but uh, someone needs to do it. So Pansy puts one round into the rear of this object 430U. And unfortunately he doesn't reload quite in time to kill the guy before the 430U takes down the friendly TVP. Not really sure why the TVP didn't run away there, but uh, maybe he couldn't, I don't know. Four seconds left on the base reset, one second left, there we go, and just in the nick, Pansy pulls out the base reset there. Pushes up to get the kill on the RU251. And the 50TP appears to not be looking in this direction, so alright then, we'll take that. And 50TP doesn't really seem to know which way to look. Oh, he just flubbed his shot. That's a bad miss. And if Pansy here can pick the kill up on this 50TP, that would be really valuable. Uh, that was a poorly timed shot by like Pansy. The guy wasn't looking at him, Pansy just needed to hang tight and uh, to take that shot. But he's able to kill the guy in the end. Scoreline is 11-12 and there aren't really many people left on either team, as you might judge from that. Um, so we've got three friendly tanks left remaining, four enemies, including three tank destroyers. And we've got the Object 277, of course. And then on the friendly team, we've got a Lanson C, more on him later. GSRR and Stritzvang 103B. And there's the T30 on a lot of health. Oh dear. And there's the object on not a lot of health, which is jolly good. And now he's on less health, and that evens the scoreline up. And puts Pansy on six kills. Now, the enemy clearly have the hit point advantage here. Like, obviously, they have the hit point advantage. Even just in... Oh, and that Jagdpanzer's full health as well. Oh, this is going to be painful. More assistance there. Um, for Pansy onto these guys. Uh, the ELC even 90 on the friendly team is already dead. He's trying to get Pansy to go and deal with the Stritzfang. And, well, in case you haven't noticed, Pansy's down to 10 rounds of ammunition. So he can do 2,400 damage. A little bit of mental maths will uh, reveal to you the enemy have more than 2,400 hit points remaining. Remember I mentioned that the ammo count on this tank can be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Anyway, Pansy puts one shot into that Stritzvang and drives right the way past the guy. Can we get the tracking shot in here? There we go. That looks like a tracking shot. This is slightly awkward. Pansy really doesn't want to stay still because then, of course, the enemies can just nail him. And Pansy's able to pick up the kill. Keeps moving. Moves on. Seven rounds of ammunition remaining. And... This is now an interesting situation. So the enemy base is obviously undefended because the two remaining enemy tanks are over here. Jagdpanzer yeah, E100 is quite slow. T30, whilst not as slow as that, is not what you would call quick. So capping is a thing that could happen. Um, oh, that was... Ooh, Ooh, that almost went hideously wrong for Pansy there, um, as once again, he pretty much flips this tank. This thing seems really easy to uh, turn over, which is interesting. And actually, when you um, judge, or when you consider the fact that this T-30 and Jagdpanzer between them have, what, 3,000 hit points, 4,000 hit points left? Maybe capping out is not such a terrible idea. 
Anyway, Pansy seems to have come to the conclusion that it's probably worth a go. And I'm honestly not sure why these two tank destroyers are taking so long here. Because if those two tank destroyers aren't going to push the friendly tanks on the cap, then they need to kind of go back to base. And if they're not going to go to back to base, they need to push the cap. They need to do something, is what I'm getting at. And because otherwise, things are just going to go hideously wrong for them. And as it is, there is one enemy tank, the Jagdpanzer, in the friendly capture circle. And the ELC even 90, who's just been waffling on in chat all game, is uh, kind of spamming the map a little bit. Looks like someone gets a reset there. My money would be on it uh, being the Stolitzvang 103B, that uh, tier 10 Swedish tank destroyer. Probably the guy who's getting the reset there. And, oh, incoming T-30. But the Lanson appears to be taking advantage of the situation to put flanking shots into that T-30. And now the T-30 has to get a reset because, well, Pansy's in his base eating all his delicious cookies. So, how's Pansy's camo going to hold out? 40 seconds. I know it's exciting, isn't it? 34 seconds. Now, between them, I reckon Pansy and the Lanson could potentially take this guy down between them. Double team him down, and I think realistically they might have to. Because I reckon even with the excellent camo on this thing, surely the T-30 is going to spot him. And the British lights do have good camo. Come on, surely the T-30 is going to spot him. Surely. This, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, is why you run optics. That right there, and there's the shot. Yeah. That's why you run optics. He should have spotted that guy before. He must have come to pretty much um, proxy spotting distance before being spotted there. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that T-30 is not running optics. And, uh, well, like I said, an excellent demonstration of why you do. So between them, Pansy and the friendly Lanson take down that T-30. And Pansy goes back to capping. Now, if that Lanson comes into the cap as well... And if the Stritzvang's able to get a reset... Yeah, but we're running short on time now. Okay, so the other option... Oh, there we go. There's the reset from the enemy Jagdpanzer. I I would have stayed in the cap personally, I think. The, um, the friendly tank destroyer was going for the reset. Having said that, now the Jagdpanzer is on low health. And the Even90 once again in the chat is being a little bit obnoxious and calling the Lanson an idiot. We'll come back to that Lanson when we look at the post-game stats. I would probably say calling the bottom tier medium tank who performs as he does, more on that later, an idiot, perhaps not the best call. Lanson clearly lands a shot there on the Jagdpanzer and Pansy picks up uh, some assistance there. And this Jagdpanzer is now effectively going to be a one shot between them, Pansy and the Jagdpanzer the Jagdpanzer, Pansy and the Lanson can probably take this guy down there he is, big, stupid slow, lumbering, there's his side and the shot bounces well, bother but the Lanson picks up the kill and there we go, that is the game let's have a look at those post game stats so for Pansy that was enough then for Ace Tanker Spotter, Bruiser, Fire for Effect Patrol Duty, Defender, Top Gun and an Orlix medal for killing tanks that were a higher tier than himself. Just having a quick look to see who that was. Stritzvang 103. Oh, no, that's the tier 9. Object 430U, he's tier 10. And Object 277, also T, tier 10, sorry. Pansy actually, believe it or not, came second on his team by experience. With 3,517 damage done, 7 kills, and 1,518 base experience. Massive shout out should go to Dodger in the Lance and Sea. I said we would come back to him. 4,567 damage, 3 kills, 1,589 base experience. And remember, that guy was in a tier 8 in a tier 10 match. So. Very well done to him. And out of curiosity, where did our talkative little friend in the ELC even 90 come? Oh yes, he came third from bottom. I think I'll just let that speak for itself. 
So for Pansy, 21 shots fired, 21 hits, 19 penetrations for that damage count. Most of it was from close range. Only 280 from longer range, 2 hits received, 2 penetrated, and Pansy did not have a lot of health left at the end. 3 enemy vehicles spotted, 9 damage, 7 destroyed, 4,618 assistance damage. I mean, the base defense points are capped at 100, um, and Pansy... Pansy got those right uh, earlier on in the match. Seven kilometres travelled, and with a premium account, that was a 46 and a half thousand credit profit, which in a regular tier 9 is none too shabby. Although, bear in mind, it looks like there was um, a mission, maybe, or something going on at the time. So there we go. A couple of light tank games there from Pansy. I hope you guys enjoyed if you would also like to submit your own replays to me, then there should be a link in the description to the Discord server. Jump on there and submit or upload your replays to whatreplays.com. Throw the URL into the replay submissions thread and I shall take a look. Also a link to my Patreon if you wish to support me that way. I hope you guys enjoyed those games in today's video. And as ever, I will wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.